Hey guys and welcome back to our series of circuit explanations where we break down our circuits we've done in our designs into smaller sections so it's easier to explain. Uh, so today we're going to have a look at the capacitor touch sensors we use in our LED coasters. So if you see the video on the top right you'll see we use it as to touch the surface and as we touch the surface the LEDs will change so it's a form of a button or a switch you could say. So in this video, we're going to explain exactly how we did it, what chip we used, uh, the PCB layout, what to look out for, uh, when routing, when doing the copper pores, things like that. So if this sounds interesting to you, please just hit the thumbs up, subscribe, and just follow this video and you too can make your own capacitive touch sensor. So this is the touch sensor circuit that we incorporated in our LED coasters. So you can see we make use of the IC8042 QT101. It's a very generic chip. Uh, we found it extremely stable and easy to integrate into your projects. So basically it takes an input, which is your pad that we'll talk about on the PCB design. And then once you touch that pad, a pulse will appear on the output and you can take this to your Arduino or any microcontroller and do something with that. So you'll tell your Arduino, when I receive a signal from this art, uh, do something. So in our case, we change the LEDs. So this circuit has different components to it and that I will go through. So on the left hand side is normal decoupling capacitors. So the data sheets um, recommends 100 nanofarads for this IC. Just make sure we'll speak about it. The capacitors has to be as close as possible to the IC. Your supply can be between 1.8 to 5.5 volts for this IC. Uh, for our LED coaster we use 3.3 volts because the 80 mega P we used also used 3.3 volts. On the right hand side is where the magic happens. So these two resistors and capacitors are called RS and CS for sensitivity. So the CS capacitor can be changed to either increase or decrease the sensitivity. So through trial and error I found 10 nanofarad to be perfect for my touch. So to become more sensitive you can increase this value but not more than 50 nanofarad. The resistance series is just to suppress the ESD EMC effect of the pad and your surroundings. Uh, I won't go too much more in detail with that. That's a whole different topic. We'll make more videos about that. But ESD is basically shock. So if uh, like if you take your feet and scrape it underneath the carpet and you touch a doorknob, that is ESD. EMC is the magnetic interference around like a radio. If you take it close to electronics can cause some interference. It won't damage it, but it can cause some strange results. Now let us take this to a PCB and see how we should place this and how we should make the pad. So as you guys know, tools, update, and it should take it across. Uh, so J1 is my pad. I'll go more detail with that, uh, how I make the pad in KiCad and how I link the pad to the schematic. And there you can see it. There are all my components. So let's just quickly make a board outline and get started. I do have a video about making PCB with board outlines, so I will not go too much detail about that. If you wish to know about it, just look at our playlist, KiCad, and we've got about 25 videos about KiCad and learning KiCad. There's our pad, little board. Great. So now we just have to make sure which capacitor is our sense and which is our decoupling. So we go back to the schematic. So C1, C2 is the coupling capacitors. They need to be as close as possible to the IC. And then my R1 and C3 is my sensitivity. So this also has to be as close as possible. So let's put it there. And my sensitivity I'll put there. So these are all quite close. You want the tracks to be as short as possible for this IC for less interference and a more stable touch. Now I want to add the pad. Uh, for the pad, there's different methods to use, but this is the one I use. So I just go place my component by pushing O and a football library will come up and then I search for pad and there you can see pro pads all different ones but I want a SMD pad preferably around so we can do a test point pad D4 so this will work nicely to change the dimensions you can just double click on it and change the size and the size will change as well. If I go 3D, you'll see the copper is showing, but I like it that my touches 
my touch sensor, my pad is covered by solder mask. So to do that, I double click on it. And here on the right hand side, you'll see, I just want on the copper, I don't want any mask. So mask is the opening of the solder mask. So if there's mask, the copper will be exposed. Now, if we go to 3D, it is nicely covered. And we can change the ref uh, to the ref you want the same as your schematic. So J1, we want our ref. So we can do this manually, push E for settings and J1. And that will link it. Let's just save. Three again. Now, so there we can go. If we touch it, it should do something. So let's just update it. So the first thing you have to do is tell that this J1, other J1's connector, tools, update, reassociate, and there we go. Now it's perfect. Now you can see pad there, pad there. Now let's start routing and talk about the important things to think about when routing a touchpad. So now we can start routing. So like I said, we would like the tracks coming from my RS and my CS, my sensitivity resistors and capacitors, to be short as possible. So now we can just route. This is pretty short. Get it in there. And that's fine. That is perfect. Uh, there we go. Just connect the three volts. Connect the ground. So the ground we can take inside. No problem with that whatsoever. You can have a ground plane at the bottom here. I'll talk about that now. And then you can connect your pad. One thing you don't want is to have any ground close to this track over here and to the pad. So when sometimes you have a component at the bottom of your board, uh, you do a copper pour, like I've spoken before in the video, you do a copper pour. So copper pour is basically just, uh, like it says, it's just a big area of extra copper. So I normally do ground at the bottom and VCC at the top. There's more videos about it on our YouTube channel, on our KiCad playlist. So there you can see I did a copper pour, so the green is my bottom and red is my top. Now you can see I've got ground underneath my pad and my track. You don't want that. So I will just move this about there if I want to have pause and just do that. So you can do that. You don't have to have a full copper. So in this example, just make sure that your ground planes are not close. You can have hatched ground planes. Uh, so when you have fully hatched, that's allowed underneath. Uh, you'll see many development boards underneath the capacitor touch has hatched. Just another tip guys, that they also recommend that to get the most optimal performance for a capacitor touch sense circuit, always use Epson D components. The three holes components can cause antennas, that's another concept. Um, and you don't want antennas in designs with um, capacitor touch sensors. So try to keep it SMDs. So once we've got a circuit like this, you can connect the touch out to any digital pin of your microcontroller or your Arduino. I hope this helped guys. So the circuit you can take, put it anywhere in your design and you'll have a capacitor touch sensor. So the pad you can change the size depending on how big your finger is I guess. Uh, play around with that. Play around with the sensitivity res capacitor. So increasing it will give you more sensitivity but don't make it more than 15 nanofarads. And then just, just take your touch out line to your Arduino and you can make it make use it like a button. Guys, I hope this was helpful. Uh, have a fantastic day. I'll see you guys in the next video where I explain another circuit. Bye.